For any professional live streaming production of any event in the UK, Ben TV Livestream are here to serve and provide you with the global coverage you need anywhere at real time. We are offering a deal to accommodate the local events. Just send us an email for more information at livestream at bentelevision.com or call us on 020-8808-8800. Ben TV, Sky 182, Bridging the Gap. Thanks for watching Ben Television. Uh, you remember a few weeks ago we interviewed the president in waiting of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now I'm pleased to inform you that he's right here in the studio. His name is Mr. Fanfa Lunga uh, Fum Fumra. Fuamba. Fuamba. Yeah. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for coming again. And he's here with his uh, special advisor on economic matters and business, I imagine, Mr. Jonathan James. You're welcome to the program. Thank you, man. Now, Mr. President in waiting. What are we waiting for? When is the election date? Has it been announced in DRC? <laughs> you know, I'm it, laughing because... It's a pertinent question, isn't it? I'm laughing because of uh, the matter. Yeah. Election. We, we want our viewers to understand the matter because we're going to ask you serious questions in a moment. The, that's what election. Yeah. In uh, our president, Joseph Kabila, yeah. language, don't exist. Wow. But the election, the whole world is watching. Normally, he must have the election in November 2016. Yeah. He did not. He failed to organize. He gave a lot of explanation. Yeah. He said that he don't have money to organize. <laughs> but normally, today, Kabila have $18 billion of dollars. Wow. And 70 companies around the world. Okay. Yeah. But... The reason he did not have the election in Congo last year was because there was no money. Yeah. And everybody and knows he has money. And after that, he called to dialogues to decide about the transition and the election. They decided in, the, in uh, December to organize in one year. Yeah. December this year. This year. But since December till now, Nothing is in place. Not, nothing is in place. Okay. Nothing is in place. No. We are now the 1st of May. Mm. It's supposed that it left seven months till December. But nothing is on the table. No government. Well, has it, it, was he it trying to change the constitution? He tried, you know, Kabila mm. walk like uh, Laurent Gbagbo. Okay, Laurent Gbagbo, yeah. Of uh, Africa. Yeah. Mm. In the past, on 2015, on January, he tried to change the constitution. Mm. There was a big demonstration. He killed more than 100 people. And with a mass grave of, uh, they, they could discover three months later, a mass grave of uh, 425 people. People, yeah. He killed. Okay. And he. He bring now a new strategy, like uh, Laurent Gbagbo. Mm. He just take time. Okay, he don't touch the constitution, mm -hmm. but he changed every day the yeah. decision. And in He's making policies. Yeah. yeah. Let, let, what's your relationship with Mr. James? Mr. James is a special gift for Congolese people. Okay. Why I'm saying special gift is that people the special people in the world who think about other people, who think how to help other people. We meet him, we explain our situation. So he's not a Congolese? He's not a Congolese. Okay. But we explain him our econ critical economic situation in Congo, political economic, mm. political situation in Congo, mm. and he decided to work with me like my special advisor okay. in economic and he bring an economic plan mm. that we present in the USA he will explain Mr. James let's come to you no now we've been told your relationship how you've seen what's going on in DRC and you you are a specialist in the area of economy and advice and all of that please tell us how did you get to know and what did you see before you decided to partnership with them and then? 
Indeed. Um, firstly, I, probably if you trace my roots, I may originate from Congo. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. That's what you never know. Yeah. <laughs> I see some similarities in the features. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I have been to Congo um, okay. last year yes, so me too. in November. Um, had the pleasure of meeting with the governor of the central bank of DRC. Yeah, okay. And we were presenting the uh, solution to DRC of the adoption of mobile money. Mm. So to use financial technology and how technology can enrich the lives of ordinary people. So we had meetings with some of the tier one banks. We met with the governor of the central bank. Mm -hmm. We also met with the uh, SCPT, which is the post office organization that have a ubiquitous coverage um, throughout all of Congo. And yeah. what we were looking to do is what technology solutions can we deploy in Congo to improve the lives of the people in Congo. Uh, what you'll find throughout all of Africa and all especially in Congo, there is a need for financial inclusion. Yeah. Um, so what technologies can be deployed to bring financial inclusion? Can you explain what financial inclusion is? Okay, so there are 2.5 billion people worldwide that mm. have no digital relationship or no banking facility. They're not included into the banking system. Okay. And as a consequence of that, they live below a certain standard that they should have because they don't have the service uh, provision mm -hmm. from a banking point of view. Let's go specific to Congo. In Congo, and the population is anything between 82 to 100 million yeah. people, there are two bra bank branches to every one million citizens. No! Yes! That's unbelievable. It's unheard of. So people are wasting an ordinary amount of time travelling to a branch if they can find a branch. Once they get there, they're inordinately long the queues. queues. Um, and in some countries where I also advise in Zimbabwe, for example, there's a cash liquidity crisis. Mm -hmm. So they're restricted on how much money they can even draw out once they go there. So the, the, the quickest solution to address that problem is the adoption of what we call mobile money. So okay. In Kenya, you have m -Pesa. Yeah, yeah, m -Pesa. So uh, one of the things I've advised from when we met with the governor of the central bank is that Congo has an excellent opportunity to deploy technology to provide mobile banking. Yeah, I, I saw um, that in Uganda. I was in Kampala. I saw it in, yeah. Absolutely. So most central banks, certainly in Africa, I've just mm. got, not too long got back from Bangladesh as well, met with the governor of the central bank in Bangladesh. In these developing countries, mm. the technology deployment of mobile money is something that all central banks are looking at. W w will you explain to our viewers what mobile money is? Okay. Because I have an understanding, but okay. I want our viewers to know. Effectively, what it is, it's a, a virtual bank account that is on your mobile phone. Yeah. So it obviates the need for you to have a physical bank account in a trusted bank branch. Mm. Um, but it gives you all the features, a bit like apps do here with Barclays or HSBC. Yeah. So all of the provision of checking your balance, making payments, etc., etc., you can do from your mobile. Yeah. So in Congo, for example, there's 58% penetration of mobiles. Okay. Um, you know, 4% of the population have bank accounts. Which mm. is Four percent. Four percent. Yeah. So what mobile money does, it gives people a tool in their hands. Yeah. Most people will have airtime and the mobile more than they have food sometimes. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, they because they want to communicate. They need to communicate mm. to transact, uh, to, to talk to the family. Um, so mobile money presents two massive opportunities. One, they can now transact with each other mm -hmm. without the need for physical, what's called fiat money, yeah. paper money. But secondly, one of the biggest... Uh, sustainers of, of all Africans is the inward remittance that comes from family from the diaspora yeah. sending money. money. So in Nigeria, 25 billion yeah. a year comes into Nigeria from the, the diaspora from remittances. It, believe it or not, the World Bank will not report it properly, but, but in Congo, it's like 50 billion, 54 billion. 54 billion pounds of dollars. Uh, dollars. Dollars. goes into Euro. Euros. Sorry, Euros. Yes, Euros. Euros. Okay. Go All right. Fair to enough. To Congo. Mm -hmm. Supporting the families from the diaspora around the world. So our mobile money technology enables somebody in London to be able to send money to a family member in Kinshasa mm -hmm. within six seconds and it will arrive in local currency. And of course start spending. And they can start spending straight away. So that's, that's mobile money. That's just one element of this economic plan. So we want to work with... Um, Dr. Longa, because we believe in his uh, care to enrich the people in the country, but to give him the technology he needs to deploy mobile money throughout all of Congo. But I have a question. Yes. With, uh, standing with Dr. Longa, who is not yet the president, mm -hmm. and who may win, who may not yes, win, yes, yes. but how will you, how will the, how is Joseph Kabila looking at you now? I mean, you've got something that is neutral, central, yes, yes. selling mobile money and the rest. How do you think the government in Congo is looking at you now? Would they be? Question. Yeah. Good question. 
I think, firstly, I'm politically uh, agnostic, for want of a better term. Okay. All what right. we want to do is support leaders, okay. transformational leaders, mm. who have a genuine heart for the people. Mm. So we're going to empower them with technology to affect change. Okay. One of the most important things I think for any new government going in is to have a sustainable, mm. have a viable, mm -hmm. uh, and an executable uh, economic plan. Okay. So what we're looking for is trusted leaders, uh, transformational leaders, okay. leaders who care about the people, mm. to undergird their political plan with an economic plan. Okay. So I'm. My passion for Congo is a passion for Congo and the people of Congo, hence why we've already had meetings with the government, the central bank, mm. and the key players in the country. But when we met with Dr. Wong, when we heard his political plans, when we heard of his political Did you go with him to the U.S.? I've travelled several times to the U.S. So okay. we presented to the State Department, we presented to the House of Representatives. Okay. But you are based here? But I'm domiciled here. Okay. Um, so we, we have travelled extensively, we've got the international communities backing, they are supporting the economic plan, underpinning mm. the political plan. Um, so by default, um, I've become aligned um, because I do believe <laughs> in, 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 in... I like in that one. Was, yeah. Yeah. By default. I was with you for that. <laughs> so by default, I, uh, yeah. there, there may be some disdain mm. by the current regime. I don't want to say anything denigrating, but I there know, may be some disdain. But at the end of the day, it's about the people. Mm. It's about deploying technology and solutions that will help the people. And I believe Dr. Longer will absolutely do that. Okay. Um, and with the diaspora that's supporting him. Now, shall we, shall, we, shall we talk something very, very seriously in relation with what you've just said? Yes. What's your take on many African countries mm -hmm. in the kind of dereliction we have seen, mm -hmm. the way they've handled the economy yep. and the, the, the way they've handled their infrastructures? Yep. Now, without putting yourself into any danger, yes. because you'll be in a better position to say you are disappointed or not yes. in, in the way they're given the amount of money open yes. to them. Yeah. One of the biggest opportunities that have missed, uh, have been missed in, I think, most African nations, there are 54 on the continent, yeah. Yeah. is that they are blessed with inordinate minerals in the ground. And the wealth is, is, is gargantuan yeah. in terms of what's there. Yeah. But there's been an inability to know how to monetize mm. those minerals in the ground. How do we get the value back to the people for what's in the ground? Secondly, on top of that, and again, devoid of anything that sounds remotely denigrating towards leaders, mm. but there's a self aggrandizement attitude, a self uh, sustaining attitude yeah. where they do well and the people continue to not do so Primitive well. Primitive thinking, isn't it? Absolutely. And the, a level of short-termism mm. that prevails where people in power maximize the benefit whilst they're in power, but not thinking about the long play or the, the long-term impact of these people. And that is a ubiquitous problem throughout all of Africa. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm really excited about with Dr. Longa, he also leads what's called ARC, which is African Renaissance Council. Okay. Um, there are now 18 countries that have signed up since we went to Washington. So ARC. To ARC, mm -hmm. which, is the, which is the other thing which I'll talk about Africa in a minute. Africa Renaissance, Renaissance Council. Council. So the it, it, I'd like to break things down okay. for our viewers. Yes. Re the word Renaissance means rebirth. Yes. You know, go on. Excellent. Um, so uh, I will answer your question fully. But um, So what you're seeing now are leaders who want to see regime change. You're seeing leaders who want to see an economic empowerment strategy that's, that's implementable. Leaders that want fair and true government yeah. for the betterment of the people, mm. not for themselves. Okay. Uh, and so um, with Dr. Long, I'm certainly, and ARC and AFC, okay. the two different parties. So AFC is mm. the... Congolese party. Yeah. ARC is the movement now throughout these 18 countries that have joined and literally we are a, a member of the ARC. Not as yet. Not <laughs> uh, but we're, 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 we're hoping yeah. to fund we're, we're, we're moving there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean this has only happened in the last eight weeks Ooh. since we got back on the first trip in Washington. Mm. Um, one of the presidents, hopefully the next president of Zimbabwe, mm. met us in Washington. Okay. Um, uh, and therefore mm. um, um, this movement birthed and yeah. literally countries were coming on each week. We now have 18 countries involved. Okay. But uh, to answer your question, I think yeah. if presidents, leaders could see a viable plan yeah. that could empower its people, monetize what's in the ground in terms of, um, of the, the mineral, the wealth, minerals, yeah. mineral wealth and a solution to a problem that they felt they could uh, execute in their country, yeah. I, I think we would see a lot more change. Oh. And what we have now, if I can elucidate on this, in our economic model, yeah. 
um, is the adoption of mobile money is one thing. Okay. Secondly, what we're introducing, which you'll see around the world, is cryptocurrency. Uh, Crypto? Cryptocurrency. Okay. All okay? Right. This is digital money. This all is right. There's a new technology called blockchain. Mm. Um, I won't go into, go into all the detail of blockchain architecture, but all innovative central banks and main tier one banks are looking at the adoption of what's called blockchain technology. I won't okay. bore you with it now. It's the future of the world, with all due respect. <laughs> it's, bigger than, it's bigger than the internet. It's bigger than the internet. It's bigger than the internet. Please do some Google research on blockchain. Okay. Okay, so when we went to the government of the Central Bank of Congo, we presented a blockchain solution, mm -hmm. which is in addition to mobile money. So yeah. mobile money is the remittance payments on a mobile that can be utilized anywhere in the country. Yeah. You, you get that. Yeah. Now, cryptocurrency or blockchain is the uh, introduction of a new currency. Okay. So we have a currency called Brights or the Bright Dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things we're advocating is that we link the cryptocurrency, we'll asset back the cryptocurrency okay. by the minerals that are in the ground. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. So hear this. This is why there's been such. Um, enthusiasm and development of ARC where all the presidential candidates in those countries are coming together to share resources. What does Africa have a lot of? Yeah. Resources. resources yeah. What, are you, what are they lacking? Cash, Cash to some, yeah, some yeah. degree the and an economic plan yeah. and the monetization of those assets. So what we're introducing is a new cryptocurrency yeah. that is asset backed by the minerals in the ground. Congo has 24 trillion. 24 trillion? Yes. And only a few people are accessing it. And we saw the, the small boys who are being used. Uh, I mean, there was a program on the TV. Heinous and things. only very dangerous. Oh. And they're using boys on that train to get this. And uh, only very few people are rich there. Very few. Yeah. Uh, and you have an oligopoly of, 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 of major entities that are exploiting we the minerals there. We saw that Sorry before. to be honest, but that is yeah, happening. Yeah, but that's the truth. It's and it's happening everywhere. It's, it's on not Sky it, TV. Yeah, no. It's not Congo specific. It's happening throughout the entire continent. So... Um, one of the things we're doing is to bring an asset-backed currency that okay. will be able to trade internationally, mm -hmm. but it's a cryptocurrency. Okay. So um, that's the second thing. I won't go into all the detail because there's a lot of uh, detail that we've presented yeah, of course, economically yeah. of how this works. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing we're introducing, which is going to sound incredibly disruptive, positively, <laughs> um, but very innovative. And we really yeah. believe this is why Africa is now poised to rise to become an emerging market, of course, capital markets darling, of course, in the world. I'm, I'm interested in that. It, it, it's phenomenal yeah. what's happening in Africa. And this is one of the reasons, again, why we, we back fully Dr. Um, Longa. Dr. Longa and Dr. Shumba and some of the other, uh, the Zambians involved, Cam, Cam, um, Cameroon, Kenya, Cameroon, mm. Kenya um, yeah, Ru yeah. Burundi, there's a number of countries that are getting involved. Yeah, I came here the other day okay, and excellent. I gave him an interview. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So there's, there's 18 countries at the moment and growing. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're pushing, uh, and this is why the State Department and the House of Representatives were really intrigued by this model for Africa, yeah. starting with Congo. Mm. because that's the, the, the ripest ground, the richest kind of territory right now, ready for this kind of model. Okay. It's the introduction of what's called a for-profit nation. Okay. Okay. I want With to see if anybody's calling us. No you problem. They, they, you don't mind taking... No, 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 at all. Okay. Absolutely. Very happy to, to All right, to share. take questions, yeah. Yes, and, and we were advised by... Um, in fact, we've got to go back to Congress in, mm. in the US and present yeah. this model to all of Congress to be implemented for Africa and other developing countries. Now, okay. this is the, th the final element of the economic plan. There's a, th a three layer. So it's mobile money, yeah. which you understand conceptually what it's well. about. Yeah. Cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, asset backed yeah. cryptocurrency. Yeah. So it takes the minerals in the ground. Zimbabwe have 30 trillion. Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. It's going to become a rich nation. From 2009, it found it had the world's largest deposit of uh, diamonds. In Zimbabwe? In Zimbabwe. They have 83 minerals in total in Zimbabwe. I was in Zimbabwe. So yes, I was in Harare. And um, uh, even I was to meet with the president, but somehow something oh, happened. Happen. Oh, okay. And, uh, uh, you know, the president is, is old and ill. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, so there are challenges in Absolutely. Zimbabwe. Oh, tremendous and, challenges. Uh, the only thing I was hearing in, in <coughs> Harare was Zim. They have yeah. a Zim dollar, a yeah. Zim transport is zim everything yeah. is zim indeed zim indeed. Zim, zim, indeed. zim zim so but uh, a nice place though lovely place uh, it is a lovely a love, place love love um, love zimbabwe um, let me quickly come to dr longa yeah. 
Now we're going to we're going on a short break very soon. But before we go on that short break, have a listen to uh, Dr. James. Uh, I think uh, you're going to how are you going to bring out the best out of uh, DRC when you become if you become the president? If uh, I become the president, yeah, I think that the Congo need a true economic plan. Okay. With 24 trillion in the ground. Wow. I think that the Congo, you see Congo, King, Congo is like a mother with nine children. Okay. Because Congo is the only country in the world with nine neighbors. Oh, okay. Nine neighbors. Yes. Oh. Okay. Cameroon, Zambia, Uganda, Rwanda, Rwanda uh, Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville. Okay. We have nine Tanzania, we have nine neighbors. And the 24 trillion, mm. okay, in the ground can help the nine children of Congo okay. to develop, okay? And if the nine children get developed, get developed, yes. that nine children have the neighbors too. So you, you, are, you are trying to see the expansive nature of this is why, This is why we create in Washington mm. that we call Africa Renaissance Council. All right. In the now. idea to bring a new leadership in Africa. That will have the overall picture. Yes. The same economic mm. And uh, that new leadership must work with art for African people. Because sometimes yeah. the word our leaders give us is uh, European people, mm. American people mm. who took all our minerals. Yeah. No. Because when that people come to our country in Africa, there is a deal. Mm. Okay? 100% of the deal, 49 for the uh, foreign mm. companies or foreign countries and 59, 51 for the government mm. okay what our leaders are doing with the 59 percent mm. of the deal mm. the 51 percent of the deal if people came for a diamond deal in congo mm. and we sign a document for 51 for 49. 49 yeah the foreign country when he took his 50, uh, 49, 49, he came back to his country to build this country. Of course, yes. Mm. But we, in our country, our leaders in Africa, mm. since our independence, what they are doing with the 51, 51 percent, we this is an example. Yeah. Like our president, Joseph Kabila, mm. in 10 years, he have a massive fortune of uh, 18 billion of dollars with 70 companies and there is not any national mining company in Congo. Up to date. Okay. You know what? We're going to hold our thoughts there and go on a short break. When we return, we'll give you a chance to call in and ask Dr. Longa or Dr. James what you feel, how to move Africa on. Uh, some people are talking of going back to development plan in Nigeria, which has been abandoned in the years of uh, military rule. Uh, please don't go away. We have serious discussion here. Beyond your love rise. On Ben TV, I'll actually be on the channel here. Ben TV! <laughs>
For any professional live streaming production of any event in the UK, Ben TV Livestream are here to serve and provide you with the global coverage you need anywhere at real time. We are offering a deal to accommodate the local events. Just send us an email for more information at livestream at bentelevision.com or call us on 020-8808-8800. Ben TV, Sky 182, Bridging the Gap. Thanks for watching Ben Television. Now we've been told what can help Africa get out of this rudimentary economics. Uh, Dr. James, again, uh, you were telling us the cryptocurrency and some and, and one other one that is going to revolutionise Africa. Please go on. Yes, sir. So there are three elements coming together. Yeah. Um, first, we mentioned about the adoption of mobile money, mobile so money, interoperable yeah. mobile money, which means it can work on any network, any phone. Especially in Africa, they have the non-smartphones. Yeah. Um, so even in the rural areas, they now have a full banking service. Yeah. The second element is the uh, introduction of what's called DLT, distributed ledger technology. Yeah. It is a state-owned new currency. We call it Brights or the Bright Dollar. Um, it is a cryptocurrency, a digital currency yeah. um, that will be asset-backed by the minerals in the ground. Of this of is course. revolutionary. This is a revolutionary. This gives Africa now a currency, a digital currency, that can be exchanged on the international exchanges with other currencies. You know, once upon a time we're talking petrodollar. Exactly. Now it's a bit like that. Yeah. So it's this mineral dollars. This is a mineral dollar, dollar. Now, yeah, yeah. So it gives it real value. Mm. A in country to be used in country, um, digitally mm. via the phone, mm. um, but on top of that, internationally now there's a currency that can be traded internationally. Yeah. A bit like what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is a digital currency. Yeah. So it's it's now taking the concept of Bitcoin and a de a deploying that and applying that on a national level. So okay. a, a whole new national currency, digital currency, to as an alternative mm. currency to fiat money, paper yeah. money. And one of the problems in Zimbabwe, as you know, yeah. uh, they went through super high inflation, I dollarization. I, I went to I went to their dumps and I saw their currency. I mean, just uh, littering the in, in the dustbin. Yep. Yep. And uh, in my hotel, okay. I gave uh, a Zim dollar to one of the cleaners, and she looked at it and was not impressed yeah. at all. So I was asking my guide, "Why? That's a lot of money in hundreds of thousands." Yeah. She said, it's "Nothing." It, it said, "It's nothing." I said, "Give her one dollar." So I tested her, brought out one dollar. She loved one dollar to hundreds of thousands, yeah. uh, even millions they of have They have billion dollar notes. <laughs> uh, yeah. They have billion so dollar billion, notes. Billion they dollar used to. So not, not interested. Okay. So, so this, no. this is revolutionary. So, so let me deal with the, the most important piece. Please. So the adoption of cryptocurrency, the ability to trade internationally by an asset-backed currency mm -hmm. is revolutionary because Africa is mineral rich. Wow. What we need to do is then monetize the minerals in the ground. We'll mm. come on to ARC's collaborative role with the other countries. The third element, um, which is very revolutionary and very disruptive, is called the for-profit nation. Okay. This is a, a white paper I've been developing for 12 years. We're now seeing traction with it. What it is, and I presented this to 13 presidential leaders in Zimbabwe in July last year. Okay. And this is the same part of the economic plan that we're giving to Dr. Longa mm. for Congo and all of ARC. Um, these 18 countries that are involved. So what it in entails is a for-profit nation. So it is a, again, a few technical terms, but it is a, uh, effectively a share capital-based government corporation. Okay. So if you can imagine, rather than the government being a normal parliamentary entity, it is now a legal entity that has shares. Yeah. It's a share capital-based entity, okay? Yeah. Uh, a government corp or poly-commercial entity. Yeah. A bit of a hybrid, yeah. okay? Um, and then that the legal entity, it will do three things. One, it will aggregate all Ill, uh, illiquid and liquid assets, so cash, yeah. non uh, or illiquid assets, all of its mining assets, 
all of its state-owned assets. It will aggregate all of that onto the balance sheet of that legal entity. Yes, so I'm getting te it. I'm te technical you. business terms. I'm but, with you. But flow yeah. with me so We're far. So can you imagine a, a national organization, yeah. a political organization, that has a legal entity that has shares? Yeah. All of the gross wealth of the minerals, there's 24 trillion of them in Congo. Uh, uh, will be the value of that will be aggregated on the balance sheet. Yeah. All of the buildings, everything that's um, illiquid assets and cash will be added to the balance sheet of that entity. This is where it's a game changer. What we're going to do is the poverty alleviation strategy yeah. is to allot and give shares to all the citizenry. Hear this. So the people out in the rural areas yeah. will now for the first time own value from their own country. So the mineral wealth in the ground, the shares will be allotted to each and every citizenry wow. in Congo, in the 18 countries that are involved with the ARC. So now people, the, the citizenry will own a part of their country. It gets better than that. I'm, I'm just giving you the, the I'm high... I'm, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm just looking at the beauty of <laughs> it. You know. I mean, this is the beauty. It, 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 what you're saying is like, it's like Miss Miss World. It is. You know, the it beauty is. of a world. Okay. Come on, go on. So, what is needed is financial inclusion mm -hmm. and poverty alleviation. Okay? This poverty is the biggest anathema in the world by far. Millions are dying. 20 million people on the verge of dying in Africa at the moment because of a lack of redistribution or a lack of distribution of the resources. resources. Yeah. So we found a technical way, a legal way, a constitutional way of monetizing what's in the ground and then we're going to give that value back to every citizen. How does the citizen access this? Okay, wonderful question. Mm -hmm. Really great question. So we will legally allot shares to every citizen of their government corporation that they are domiciled in that say Congo, one mm -hmm. of the 18 countries. And then through the role of the mobile money and the cryptocurrency, yeah. we will give them value onto what, on, with mobile money you have a mobile wallet, it's a bank yeah, account, mobile wall, yeah. it's a mobile wallet. So we will uh, disperse funds into their mobile wallet from the minerals in the ground. Please understand, there's only 82 million to 100 million people in Congo. <laughs> there's 24 <laughs> trillion. I mean, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So you can literally Literally, this doesn't sound like pipe dreams. It might sound naively optimistic. We've been working on this for 12 years. We've had meetings, high-level meetings in Washington. This is something we know is implementable and will yeah. change the life of you know, people you in know, Africa. You know, you know, let me, let me, let me, let I haven't finished okay, sorry, okay. sorry, to, sorry to just yeah, on, I know it's technical as detail. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll shut up in a moment. Just the key point is, so can you imagine then, we have allotted shares to the citizenry. We have monetized what's in the ground. Yes. So we've given them physical money, or not physical, or digital money, digital on money. their mobile wallet. So they can now spend Transact, money yeah. from the value of what's in the ground. And the last thing we're going to do is then any entity that's a legal entity with shares ca can be floated on a stock market. Okay. Okay. So, there's a term called IPO, Initial Public Offering. I know this is technical business yeah, terms, but, um, yeah. um, but people will catch the concept. Facebook, um, all these big entities, Instagram they make their yeah. money from the flotation on the stock market. There is nothing stopping a legal entity that has aggregated value on its balance sheet, yeah. that has allotted shares to members, there's nothing stopping President Longer from floating or doing an initial public offering yeah. of that legal entity on an industry in that country, either the Congolese Stock Exchange or the London Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, the value that's created from what's called an IPO yeah. will then be given back to the people. Oh, okay. Because they are shareholders yeah, of, course, of yeah. their own country. Oh. And this gives a sense of pride to every individual. You know, all along, being a political scientist myself, okay. uh, yeah. I've always been thinking when they talk about, I'm from Nigeria, okay. when they talk about Nigerians, people just take the 5% of the city dwellers. Yeah. Yeah. The remaining 95% who are village dwellers, nobody think, nobody, nobody yeah. think. Yeah. They just, it's, it's like there's no solution for them. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. now this one brings everybody Every together. Every citizenry. Yeah. Now, let, not just that. Sorry to interject. Not just the domiciled citizenry. Mm. The diaspora. Yeah. Will now, also the, be allotted shares. I think this is good news. Now, this now, is, now, is this, now, this is heaven the, on earth. This is the icing <laughs> on the cake. But you have a caller. Someone wants okay. to ask you a question. No problem. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Vincent. 
Dr. Good, Shego. Good morning, sir. What would you like to say? Uh, this is for Dr. James. Okay. Hello. Yeah, uh, I, I heard you talk about Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. I heard you talk about Renaissance. Yeah, go on. Uh, which is a, a very interesting uh, aspect of what you, your discussion is about. I happened to be in Zaire in 1982. Uh, Kinshasa, and I have a, a little idea of um, what, what the problems are uh, from that uh, uh, point. My yeah. concern is this. You talk about minerals, 30 or so number of them under the ground. Yeah. How would you uh, 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 win these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, renaissance, the members, specialists trained abroad, to return home and become the prospectors of these minerals. Because by and large, you discover that it's the Europeans still coming to do the job. Yeah. Uh, to supervise, and then we do the dirty job. So the concern about, my concern is this. How would you get these uh, uh, indigenous uh, trained personnel okay. to be fully in charge because that is one problem uh, uh, Zimbabwe has, Correct. even though it has the minerals. Eh? You need indigenous people to be responsible, supervising those minerals. This is my, All right. my question. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. Now, we've, I've, I've been to Zimbabwe, I've been to uh, DRC, and I saw many Chinese taking over. Now they're taking over Nigeria as well. So, okay. so excellent question. The reason you're seeing uh, Chinese and others is because the government has entered into what's called a quid pro quo, short-term cash yeah. um, in exchange for control given to others. Um, the indigenization issue um, and how to empower the uh, diaspora, when, the, when you see this comprehensive economic plan, it will incentivize, yeah. you know, Zimbabwe, th over three million people left. There was a brain drain of all the talent left Zimbabwe. This is happening in other countries as well. But when you see this kind of economic plan and with fresh political leaders, the diaspora will be incentivized to come back mm. because they will realize, now I can realize my business aspirations, my career aspirations in my own country now because there is a sustainable development economic plan. But to answer the question, what is needed is subject matter expertise from around the world. Okay. So one of the plans that Dr. Longa has, and I totally support it, is once he's in power, the parliament those governing the country, mm. those involved with the implementation of the for-profit nation, will be made up of the diaspora okay. from around the world, wow. not just the indigenous population in the country. Because you need the best brains, you need subject matter experts who have different cultural views, different skills and expertise, experiential knowledge to come together. And this sounds utopian, but it's absolutely possible. Yeah, because so I, I, I was to just answer the caller's I, question. Yes, I was just thinking the, the, the sociological challenge when it comes to diasporas coming yes. to help. Yes. You see that those at home, yes. they want to put a block and say, no, you've not been here with us. And then also, I'm also thinking, if you now want to take economic power mm -hmm. from the few, mm -hmm. from this oligopoly, mm -hmm. you, want to, you, want to, you want to give it to everyone, yes. then you have a challenge. People, the, 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 the few at the top, we want to resist you, especially in a country like Nigeria, where the few... Uh, either earning or stealing yes. it, yes. but uh, how will you now break through the, the very barrier? Good, very good point. There's 24 trillion in the ground. Let's just put some context <laughs> to this. Yeah, okay? yeah. You wouldn't have people fighting to the same degree. It might sound naively optimistic. If everyone can do well, it, it, it won't detract from what those at the top have. It will enrich and enlarge significantly what is available for everyone yeah. to address the real issues of poverty, uh, infrastructure development, education. Is this online? Um, so I do believe that um, the, this model will address some of the issues of cor mm. corruption. Mm. It will address some of the issues, I believe, of short-termism okay. because they can see a, a full, full plan. So uh, I, I strongly believe, yes, initially there may be some resistance because mm. it sounds as though we're taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, 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 that would be challenge in Africa. <laughs> it is. Let, let, let's come back to Dr. Sorry. Longa. Now, you have a wonderful special advisor here. And uh, can you tell us the dream you have for Congo? And if you are Congolese watching us, you want to ask Dr. Longa questions, this is your moment. You can get me on Nigerians Decide at yahoo.com. Any question you want to ask, because if become president, then this, we, are, we are talking to Mr. President here. So what's your dream now? Or, or what are the issues in Congo that have led to Congo to be beneath what it should be? My dream is to build a new Congo okay. with our economic plan to give to Congolese that hope okay. of a new life mm. when Congolese will become shareholder of the resource, natural resource. Mm. You see, it is easy. Like Tesco here. Yes. I think that all employees of Tesco uh, have shares in yeah. Tesco. Yeah. 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 It's very John easy. Same, th same thing John in uh, John Lewis. Yeah. 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 Same in John Lewis. Yeah. For me, my dream is to bring a new life in okay. Congo, okay. in Africa. Mm. Okay. And uh, to change the way my people are living, to bring peace. Can you imagine every hour, the time we pass here, 48 women are raped in Congo? Yeah, we read it, and soldiers involved too. Yeah. People are killing themselves. They found 40 mass graves last week in central of Congo, called Kasai. Okay, d'accord. Voulez-vous parler français ou congolais oui. maintenant? Go on, talk to that camera in French. In French. Yeah, so that it can really get you. Je m'adresse à mes compatriotes congolais de la diaspora spécialement. Le moment est arrivé que nous nous mettions ensemble. La diaspora, nous sommes l'espoir du Congo. Nous sommes pratiquement 10 millions. Notre souhait, c'est d'encourager la diaspora à retourner avec leur expérience au Congo. Pas ce Congo avec Kabila. Mais le Congo sans Kabila et ça, sa bande d'aventuriers. Nous travaillons fortement pour qu'il y ait un changement radical au Congo. Nous sommes les porte-étendards, nous sommes vos porte-parole dans la communauté internationale. Nous avons déjà démontré que Kabila n'a pas la volonté d'organiser les élections et qu'il ne va jamais organiser les élections. Mais le peuple congolais doit se prendre en charge pour changer les choses, afin que les plans que nous avons ici, ces plans économiques, sur nos minéraux, okay? nous avons 24 000 milliards de dollars de minéraux en valeur. Nous ne pouvons pas être les derniers dans le monde. Mon message, c'est ce message d'espoir pour un Congo nouveau. D'abord. Uh, bon, <rire> d'accord. Merci, merci beaucoup. Um, you, that was well presented to them, and I'm sure they, they had you. So, what are your final thoughts as we come to the end of the program? What are the main things? Because not only for Congo, I'm sure that uh, the CEO will invite you to come and speak to the whole of Africa mm -hmm. through this medium. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you will. So, what would you like to say in closing? Um, you have 20 seconds. Okay. I think what will affect change yeah. is collaboration rather than competition. Okay. And I think what we're seeing is 18 countries coming together because they now can see an implementable model that will affect change and sustain change. Um, so I'm really excited that ARC, being led by AFC, yeah. um, is really precipitating change on a, on a continent-wide level. The future of Africa is going to be bright. Yeah. The future of Africa is, is, is going to emerge. I think this is the greatest news no, I've ever uh, had where every African is empowered. Every empowered. Yes, That's every, the key point. Every African yeah. is empowered then with the economy within their own continent. Yes, absolutely. I think it's the greatest thing. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Lolanga and Dr. James. Um, that's how far we leave DID today, Dialogue in Diaspora. My name is Shagun Johnson, and um, I just want to leave you with one poem. Um, Anthony Joshua, if you are listening to this, this is from your country concerning jollof rice. Since you've won, I'm sure your mom will provide for you a plate of jollof rice. The poem says, jollof rice hot, jollof rice cold, jollof rice in the pot, three days old, 
Some like it hot, some like it cold. Jollof rice in the pot, three days old. But someone told me that uh, the uh, information minister of Nigeria, Mr. Lai Mohamed, when he was asked to read this poem to Richard Quest, what he said was, Jollof rice is hearty, some like it is hearty, some like it is cold. Now in the in a pot, three days he oludi. That was Lai Mohamed. That wasn't me. My name is Shagun Johnson. Until next time, I'll be with you. God bless you. Bye-bye.